Okay, let's go ahead and do some journal entries. Number one, invested $100 cash in business. Okay, so we know we have cash coming in the business. Now remember, whenever we're doing journal entries, we're doing them from the perspective of the business and not from the perspective of the owner or the customer or something like that. We're always doing this from the uh, perspective of the business. So in number one, we invest $100 cash in the business. So we know we receive cash. Cash is an asset. So cash going up, we have to debit it. So cash goes up, $100. And we have our equity going up, which in this case we call capital. And capital we are going to credit for $100. And that's the first journal entry. Number two, we have purchased used car for $2,000. Now, do we have cash in this transac transaction? The answer is yes. We have $2,000 going out. Um, so we know we're going to credit cash. What's coming in? What's coming into the business is the used car. So we're going to go ahead and uh, debit equipment, which will be the car. You can put dash car if you'd like. Equipment, car, and that'll be for $2,000. And then, of course, we're purchasing it with cash. So that means cash is going out of the business and we will credit that. Credit makes an asset go down for $2,000. So now notice here the, the asset is going down, cash is going down for $2,000 and the equipment uh, is going up so asset is going up for $2,000. In the first case cash came up for $100 and capital or equity was also going up because it uh, goes up with a credit uh, for $100. Number three purchase supplies on account. Now the key here is on account. If we're purchasing something on account that means we are not using cash. Okay, So we're not going to have cash in this transaction um, but because we're doing the purchasing that means we're going to gain supplies. So we know supplies being an asset will go up so we can put supplies of $500. That's our asset going up and then what are we going to credit? Well if we were doing this with cash we would go ahead and put cash in the credit but again we're not doing this for cash we're doing this on account which means we have a liability going up in this case it's accounts payable A-P for shorthand and that's for five hundred dollars. So in this case we have the asset going up supplies and we have a liability going up five hundred dollars for the same. When we pay them off the journal entry will be reversed. Let's just do a 3.1 here just to show what will happen 3.1 when this gets paid off. The accounts payable will actually go away with a debit of $500 and we will pay out the cash that we owe them here with a credit for another $500. And so we have four journal entries here uh, and the last one would be just a 3.1. It's, it's not up here but when we actually pay off this supplies on account, we would do accounts payable debit and cash credit. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line over here to show um, we're on number four now. Number four, paid $350 cash for advertising. Okay, so we know cash is going out. Always start with cash. Cash is going out, so we're going to credit cash. We need a debit. Advertising is an expense. We're not paying for a past expense or a future expense, so um, it's not going to be any kind of prepaid or payable, but because it's paying for something in the current period, it's advertising expense. And so we'll just put add expense. And then we will go ahead and debit that for $500. And we paid $350 cash for that advertising expense. So it's cash on the credit side, $500. Number five. Number five is billed customer $500 for services. Now when we're only billing them, that means we have not received the actual payment yet. So there's no cash in this transaction. We do have an asset though because they owe us money. They owe us $5,000 for services we've already performed. That's an economic benefit uh, in the future. And so that would be accounts receivable. Accounts receivable for $5,000. And then, of course, an asset's going up, and so we have to have something um, to, to balance this transaction out. And in this case, it's equity, and it's in the form of revenue. So we could say, because it's services performed, we might say service revenue, or serve rev for short, and that'll be for $5,000. And that's our journal entry. 
Last but not least is number six, and this is receive $2,000 payment for bill in number five. So what I mean is this one is connected with uh, number six here. And so we received $2,000 cash. So they didn't make the full payment of $5,000. That's okay. Sometimes people don't always have enough money to pay for the full bill. Um, but we do know that we're receiving cash, which means we'll debit cash for the $2,000. Now, we're receiving a $2,000 payment, so the tendency is to want to credit uh, revenue. But in fact, we've already recognized the revenue up here. Okay, so if we credit the revenue again, we're going to be double counting it, and we'll have five and two thousand dollars revenue in our income statement when we only want five thousand, which we've already recorded. And so what's happening is the accounts receivable is actually going to go down. So the asset, the amount that they owe us, is actually going to go down in this example. Received two thousand dollar payment for the bill in number five. So accounts receivable goes down by two thousand. If we drew a little uh, T account, which we will talk about later, and called it AR, then that would mean when AR gets on, they owe us 5000 and then we went ahead and debited, or I'm sorry, credited AR here in this transaction for 2000 So the balance that they owe us now is $3,000. And that makes sense because we originally charged them five. They made a $2,000 payment, so they still owe us $3,000. Hope this video helps. Um, I will be trying to put more of these videos on to help you guys out along the quarter. If you have specific things that you'd like to see um, or things that you're struggling with, I'd be happy to take recommendations and I'll try and put these videos online.